The story in Tears of the Kingdom is a lot like your uncle promising you a cool surprise only to end up in the middle of the desert missing a kidney. There was so much build up and promise, but ultimately they not only let us down, but they made all other Zelda lore feel pointless. I can't be the only one that remembers the hype of the very first trailer they showed. I watched it five times in a row, then in slow motion, then backward. There was so much to unpack. There were cool runes, and of course Ganondorf. There were so many questions that came from this trailer. Which Ganondorf is that? What is that hand? What are those runes? I was so excited to play Tears of the Kingdom to see how this game fit in with the rest. But when I finally played it, I was really disappointed to find out that it didn't answer any of the these questions. The tone of the story was set when they destroyed the Master Sword. They decided to cast aside old relics in favor of a new, much less interesting story. The story was not only bad, it was harmful. While I was playing it, I couldn't help but think that even I could write a better story than this. So that's what I'm doing. Before we can get to my version of the story, and trust me, we'll get there, we need to understand what went wrong with the story in Tears of the Kingdom. I think the problems in this story can be broken down into just three categories. Presentation, writing, and retcons. Personally, I think that the presentation and the retcons are a lot more important, so let's start with writing. Now, when I say writing, I'm not talking about the specific lines of dialogue that characters say, although some of them could use work. I'm talking about the actual writing conventions that were completely ignored in this game. For example, if I were to ask you, what is the theme of this game? Could you give me an answer? Well, I asked my audience the same question and barely anyone could agree on a theme. This is because there isn't a theme. There are several attempts at a theme. You could say that the theme is sacrifice, since both Zelda and Raru sacrificed themselves, but that's completely overshadowed by the theme of friendship with Link and the Sages. They were trying to do too much all at once. So, how do we fix this? Well, it's actually pretty easy. We just pick a theme and run with it. To write a good theme, you need to ask a question and then the main story beats try to answer that question. I think the question that Tears of the Kingdom should be asking is what does it mean to rule? This question is a direct result of the events from the previous game. Zelda is faced with the task of rebuilding an entire nation. And then she gets transported to the past where she meets Raru and Ganondorf. They are both kings who have very different ideas of what it means to rule. Zelda can watch these two men clash and learn from their mistakes. Then the story can end with Zelda choosing to sacrifice herself because that's what leaders do. The next thing Tears of the Kingdom screwed up is retcons. Retcons are where you retroactively go back and change things that were already established in a story. There's a lot of lore that's existed in the past 35 plus years. It would be unreasonable to expect the writers to include every single tidbit of lore that's ever been presented. It's not unreasonable for Zelda fans to want some kind of consistency with the lore. For example, we have the Master Sword getting absolutely obliterated by spaghetti at the beginning of the game. Everything in the series up to this point has reinforced the idea that the Master Sword is the ultimate weapon against evil. There is an entire game dedicated to the lore and creation of this divine weapon. And then suddenly Ganondorf's like spaghetti and it's it's just over. Speaking of Ganondorf, one of the most frustrating inconsistencies in this game is that Ganondorf is there at all. Before this game, every single version of Ganondorf is killed. He dies. End of story. Now, this doesn't mean that you can't bring Ganondorf back in a new game. It just means that you need a freaking good reason to do it. And Tears of the Kingdom doesn't give us anything close to an explanation. It's just disrespectful to the lore that fans have come to love. So, how do we fix this? Let's start 
by making sure the Master Sword doesn't get destroyed. So instead of blowing it to pieces, we can work around it by just pulling a Wind Waker. Sure, you have the Master Sword and it's not gonna break, but it's lost its power due to thousands of years of not being used. Instead of the Master Sword shattering, let's just have it get knocked out of Link's hand. It happens all the time. This way, Zelda can still pick up the sword, take it with her to the past, and then Link can get blasted with spaghetti and knocked down to three hearts. The rest of these inconsistencies really just need an explanation. Have Ganondorf in this game drop a line where he explicitly states that Ganondorf from Ocarina of Time is a completely different person. He can say something about his ancestor who once conquered Hyrule. And this way, we don't have to guess. Another example would be removing the line where Raru says that he's the first king of Hyrule. There was no reason to add this in. You can still have the exact same story play out without this information. All this does is alienate the audience further by saying that even if the other games did happen, they happened so far in the past that they no longer matter. Just cut the line. The world can feel so much more lively and fleshed out if we simply see the cause and effect relationship between this game and the previous ones. Finally, we have presentation, the biggest problem the story has. In fact, I think the other two problems could have been worked with if they hadn't messed this one up so bad. The memories that Zelda leaves around Hyrule for you to find was the worst possible method they could have picked to present this story. Not only is it very easy for memories to be viewed out of order causing major spoilers but the memories they show lack any real weight behind them they are weak attempts to justify the gameplay decisions that the developers made they lack character development and they lack urgency so how do we fix this it's actually pretty simple let me play as zelda if you want me to be engaged with a story let me be the one that moves it along. Give me short backstories where we play as Zelda and we get to uncover the story for ourselves. I really think it's a brainless missed opportunity by the developers. People have been asking for a playable Zelda since the beginning and they will never stop. These were some general problems that I had with the story and quick explanations about how I think we could address them. But I promised you that I would fix the story. And I think the only way I can do that is to rewrite it entirely. So, without further ado, here is my new and improved Tears of the Kingdom. The game will start in almost the exact same way. Zelda and Link descend deep into the Royal Passageway, find Ganondorf, and Zelda picks up the stone that falls from Raru's hand. However, their confrontation with Ganondorf will go just slightly different. Instead of Ganondorf busting the Master Sword into pieces, we can have him simply knock it out of Link's hand. Then, Zelda goes to pick up the Master Sword, but before she can get it back to Link, the floor below her collapses. This sets up the same dual storyline with Zelda in the past and Link in the present, but this this time, they don't undo all the lore behind the Master Sword. Now the story can continue, following Link for the moment. He still wakes up on the Sky Island with his arm completely replaced by Raru's, and then Raru explains the situation and grants Link the abilities in the game. This time, however, there will be two main differences. Number one, when you get the Pura Pad from the Zonai Construct, they tell you that Zelda left messages on the device. However, when you check it, you find out that they've been corrupted because it has been so long. The Construct then advises you to find find someone who can fix it. We will get back to this point later in the video. Two, when the Great Sky Island is completed, Raru goes with you as a companion character. You have his arm, so why not? He can travel with you, but only you can hear his voice. This will let him give insights into new areas you go to, or give you information on enemies that you fight. He can also act as the exposition dump, just like Midna in Twilight Princess, who knew where all the fused shadows were and the Mirror of Twilight. Raru can guide you to the places you need to go. Now that you've finished the Great Sky Island, we can make our way to Lookout Landing. Here, you talk to Pura and tell her about the Pura pad being corrupted. She tells you that she can fix it, but she needs some special materials to do it. Luckily, each of these materials can be found in the four regions of Hyrule. She'll also tell you that ever since they repurposed the Divine Beasts and Sheikah Towers, they've had a huge improvement for life in Hyrule. They installed electric lighting in many places, they have heaters for when it gets cold, and they were able to create better forms of travel with their new towers. They used just about every piece of ancient technology they could get their hands on, but some of it mysteriously disappeared after the Calamity. She'll also tell you that some of the shrines scattered throughout 
throughout the map fell into deep chasms and that Robbie is leading a team to investigate them. So now you have an objective. You are going to get special ancient materials from each race of people. These scenarios play out about how you would expect. You get to the locations, they tell you that they would really like to help, but they have a big problem that they're trying to fix right now. So of course, being Link, you help them and you complete the four dungeons in the process. Then when you beat the dungeon, the old sages tell you a story. However, this time they tell you about Zelda finding them and recruiting them as a sage for each respective element. Very similar to the champion's ballad in Breath of the Wild. Oh, and uh, one more small change in this section. I'm making Cast the new Sage of Wind because it's my video and I get to do what I want. Each time you get a new material from each region, you can go back to Pura and she will recover part of the records on the Pura pad. As soon as she does this, you will unlock a playable memory that you can access at any time from the Pura pad. There will be four memories and they will go as follows. Number one, where in tarnation am I? Number two, we are literally at war. Number three, just girl stuff. And number four, wait, did Sonya just die? And now I'll explain each of these memories in great detail. Memory one. We will open with Zelda starting a recording on the Pura pad. No harm in documentation. The camera then switches to third person with that weird bug thing that Link uses for selfies. The memory then opens up to the player to walk around and try to figure out what's going on. You somehow ended up in the canyon connecting the Gerudo Desert and Hyrule. You still have the Master Sword, so you can swing that baby around if you want. Obviously not as well as Link, but you're not completely helpless. There's a wooden structure up ahead and naturally the player will start to walk toward it. But as you do, you hear someone yelling at you from behind the wooden barricade. Are you insane? What are you doing out there? You see a man dressed in armor waving his hands frantically. Get behind hover, quickly. As he yells, you can see the ground start to tremble. And from around the bend, you see dozens of Gerudo women on horseback. At this point, it's definitely time to run for the barricade. You have time to make it to the barricade before the horses get to you, but the arrows they're shooting at you are not quite as forgiving. You can still hear the same man screaming at you to get cover. She's not going to make it. Raru, she needs help. Now, the gameplay changes into a cutscene with the arrows hurtling straight for Zelda. But just as they're about to land, Raru appears and creates a magical barrier and the arrows all collide and fall pointlessly to the ground. Raru grabs Zelda and starts pulling her toward the barricade. The Gerudo women begin closing the gap, bringing their spears to a threatening position. Behind the front lines, archers ready another volley of arrows. Raru lets go of Zelda and faces down the cavalry. He fumbles for a second in his pocket before pulling out a tear-shaped stone. He then, rather shakily, rams it into an ornamented gauntlet. As he fumbles in his panicked state, the volley of arrows streak from the Gerudo. Raru's eyes grow wide and in desperation he throws his hands out forming a barrier of light with which the volley of arrows collides. In a panic, the Gerudo women try to pull their horses to stop. Then, in one magnificent display of power, Raru unleashes a burst of energy directly at the cavalry. The powerful beam carves a deep gash into the canyon wall. Dust fills the air and an eerie silence falls over the battle. Then, after a moment, anguished cries fill the air. Zelda looks on in horror, and then back to Raru. How did- Zelda trails off when she notices that Raru is staring at the top of the canyon. There, overlooking the carnage, is a silhouette. The camera zooms to reveal Ganondorf standing high above his troops. He looks down on the destruction and slowly shakes his head and walks away. Zelda stares up where the figure stood then stares back at Raru in confusion. Raru looks pointedly at Zelda. Then his expression changes from vindictive anger to absolute befuddlement before falling into a politely curious expression. He surveys Zelda briefly and his eyes rest on the Master Sword before he speaks. Come with me. The cutscene then transitions back into gameplay. Now you get to follow Raru all the way back to the Great Plateau. Along the way, Raru begins to interrogate Zelda. He then asks how she managed to get that sword. She explains about her encounter with a mummified warlock who attacked her in Link. When Raru hears the name Link, he seems surprised before he asks what her name is. She tells him that she is Zelda, daughter of King Rome Bosphoramus Hyrule and Princess of Hyrule. That's very interesting. Because, as far as I'm aware, I'm the King of Hyrule. This provokes a conversation where Raru explains that the king was killed, and since he married Princess Sonya, he became the king by default. During this conversation, there will be small puzzles for you to solve along the journey. 
It would be best if these puzzles highlighted the differences between Link and Zelda. For example, we could see some of the fledgling designs of robots built by the Sheikah that Zelda can help fix, anything to show Zelda's prowess as an engineer and field scientist. Once you make your way to the Great Plateau, you will be approached by Sonya, and the gameplay transitions back into a cutscene. Sonya is obviously counting the people returning in various wagons. She runs up to Raru, concerned. Where are the others? Panic is evident in her face. They are all unharmed. We left a few behind to hold the blockade. I wouldn't worry too much. After the show I put on for Ganondorf, I don't think he'll try another charge in that position. Sonya looks flustered and a little shaken. Did you use the stone? Raru glances back at Zelda, then responds. I didn't have too much say in the matter. Sonya looks at him eagerly. What did it feel like? Are you injured? Raru seems uncomfortable with the questions, but responds solemnly. It was exhilarating. I felt like a god. Sonya seems concerned. Are we sure we should be using such power as a weapon? Raru thinks for a moment, stroking his chin, then shakes his head. My people created those stones to be used. It's a miracle we were able to find them at all. It would be a waste not to use that power to defend our people. Raru then looks back at Zelda before he speaks. I believe we have something that you may find even more interesting than these stones. Raru then gestures to Zelda. This young lady claims to be Zelda, the princess of Hyrule. But I don't see how such a thing can be possible. Sonya stares back at Raru, then down to Zelda, and finally at the Master Sword. She puts her hand to her mouth and whispers, Zelda? Gently, she puts her hand forward, and as she does so, the stone on her necklace begins to glow. She pulls her hand back reflexively, then looks at Zelda, almost frightened. You, you shouldn't be here. This shouldn't even be possible, unless... She looks into Zelda's eyes, then she looks at the stone on Raru's hand. How could you... Let me see the stone. Zelda stares back blankly. The what? Zelda continues to stare in baffled confusion, then understanding envelops her features. She then reaches into her pocket and pulls out the stone she picked up from her encounter with Ganondorf. Raru and Sonya exchange looks. Then Sonya speaks. Well, it would definitely be interesting to learn how two of those stones can exist at the same time. End memory one. This version of the memory serves the purpose of three different memories. You have the two memories in Tears of the Kingdom that just serve as setup and the memory where Ganondorf attacks the Hylians. Since we are making playable memories, we have a little more room to world build by interacting with NPCs or by observing the environment. This lets us cover a bit more ground per memory by essentially making them a lot longer than the three minute memories we got in Tears of the Kingdom. Additionally, you'll be able to start or exit memories whenever you choose through the menu. Now on to memory two. We open with control over Zelda, and this time we are on the Great Plateau. This portion of the memory will just allow the player to explore the Great Plateau in its former glory. There can be little puzzles that you can solve to help the people around the area, but all of these are completely optional. You can also meet Minoru here. She will thank you for your help on some of her construct designs and show the early versions of a project she is working on. She will also tell you about the Zonai stones and how they managed to find three by exploring the labyrinths created by their ancestors. She explains that only Raru, Sonya, and herself carry them. If you talk to any of the NPCs, they will refer to you as Princess Zelda and tell you that Raru is waiting for you at the palace. When you arrive at the palace, you will find Sonya with a toddler. She is a Hylian girl with golden hair. If you approach and talk to them, Sonya will beckon her to come say hi to her aunt Zelda. Oddly enough, the toddler's name is also Zelda. You will also find Raru here. He will tell you that he received a message from Ganondorf about a surrender. He says that as the princess of Hyrule, she should come with him. Once you agree to go with him, the game will transition into a cutscene. This cutscene takes place on the island in the center of the river in front of the Gerudo Pass. Zelda, Sonya, and Raru stand in front of a large battalion of soldiers. The Hyrule royal family crest waves on the banners their forces wield. Across the bridge, Ganondorf marches towards them, flanked by two Gerudo women. Sonya steps up to Raru. Are you sure we should be doing this? Raru bends down slightly to speak to Sonya. We have no reason to be scared. Sonya shoots back. The magic those witches taught him is not something to be taken lightly. Raru chuckles. <laughs> well, if he tries anything... I will rain hell down on him and his people. Sonya does not reply, 
but she is visibly uncomfortable. Raru steps forward and raises his voice to be heard over the field. Ganondorf, we are here to negotiate the terms of your surrender. You may proceed unarmed. Anything else will be treated as an attack. Ganondorf pulls out his katana, raises it into the air, then throws it on the ground. His guard does the same. I would never betray the trust of potential allies. A mischievous smirk flashes across his face. Cautiously, both groups move to the center of the island. Nervous looks are exchanged between Zelda and Sonya as the groups converge. Ganondorf and Raru make a grandstand, sizing each other up. Ganondorf then spares a glance for Zelda and eyes the Master Sword that she carries with her. Then he begins to speak. As the rightful king of the Gerudo, I represent my country. Speak your terms. Raru waits a minute before raising his chin and speaking. You will relinquish control over all free Gerudo settlements you seized with your armies. Your country will pay for the damages caused by this war. And you, Ganondorf, will stand trial for the war crimes you and your army have committed against my kingdom. In return, I will spare your nation. Once you have agreed, we will place you under arrest and take you to our prison where you will await your trial. Ganondorf lets out a cruel laugh. <laughs> and what of you, Roru? When will you stand trial for your crimes against my people? What of the slaughters you have unleashed upon my people with your ancient magic? He pauses and steps forward, towering over Raru. Your terms would see to the destruction of the Gerudo. Raru looks up into Ganondorf's face. And what would you propose? From what you have displayed, the destruction of your people is no concern of yours. The only desire you have is the downfall of all people, including your own. If I had not entered this war on behalf of Hyrule, you would have seen to the annihilation of my entire kingdom. I was made king to preserve this country, and I will settle for nothing less. Ganondorf steps back. I will see to it that no more attacks are leveled against your people, and I will pay for the reconstruction of your kingdom. But I will remain in my lands to rule over my people, as is my birthright. What birthright? Do you expect me to honor a tradition that has not been observed for millennia? Your right to rule died the same day as the first Ganondorf. Ganondorf growls with anger. Your authority comes from a rock on your hand. You could not begin to comprehend true power. You are weak. Weak? I could execute you on the spot. Rage flashes in Ganondorf's eyes and he lowers into a fighting stance. Energy starts to crackle between the two kings. Dark, crimson sparks flash from Ganondorf's hands. Stand down, or I will show you real power. Sonya runs in front of Raru. Stop it, the both of you. Are you so prideful that you will kill each other and guarantee the destruction of both our kingdoms? Ganondorf looks at Sonya, glances down at her neck, noticing the stone hanging from it. He clenches his fist, smirks, then stands up straight again. Raru continues to scowl at Ganondorf and remains in his fighting stance. Sonya grabs his hand with the glowing stone and pulls it down. Raru looks down at Sonya and sees that she is gesturing to the troops behind them. The camera pans over the battalion, showing the fear in the soldiers' faces. Some are old men, while others are little more than children. Sonya gently pulls Raru's face around to look at her. My love, let this war end. End memory two. This memory takes the place of the throne room memory from the original game. I think having it be a negotiation allows for a greater range of exploration than an outright surrender from Ganondorf. It also allows for the theme of what does it mean to rule to be expanded upon. The whole idea of Raru just letting Ganondorf get in as close as he did in the original game didn't make very much sense to me. Like, Raru knows he can't trust Ganondorf, and he should 100% execute him. But instead, he just lets him infiltrate his kingdom for no reason other than for the plot to happen. This scene also allows for a lot more character development from Sonya. She can be the foil to Raru's brash nature, instead of just being the nice mother figure for Zelda. And now, for memory three. This memory will start with a very short cutscene. Sonya is walking with Zelda late at night on the Great Plateau. If you're ever going to make it back to your time, it is imperative that you understand how this stone works. Sonya puts her hand up to her necklace. It doesn't simply give you power, but instead amplifies the power inside you. Sonya says as she picks up a rock nearby and throws it a few feet away. Then 
It freezes and returns to her. Time. Sonia catches the rock and tosses it towards Zelda. It is like a river's flow. It never ends. The rock falls at Zelda's feet, and Sonia continues to talk. A child is mine will turn to a noble ambition. Young love will become the perfection. Sonia gestures toward the rock on the ground. You, Princess Zelda, have control over this river. The blood of the goddess runs in your veins, and you have the right to command it. The game now goes into basically a tutorial. Sonia will describe new and creative ways to use the recall ability. This will serve as a means to help the player with future puzzles as Zelda, but also show new ways to use it as Link in the main story. After you finish training, you will sit down with Sonia. Zelda buries her face in her hands. You made this look a lot easier than it is. Sonia smiles. I've had much longer to practice. Zelda sighs, then looks over to Sonya. I don't know if I'll ever make it back home. Sonya puts her arm around Zelda. You have traveled through time once before. I'm sure we can find another way. Zelda buries her head into Sonya's shoulder. How can you be so sure? It took me years to learn how to use my sealing powers, and by then, my entire kingdom had been destroyed. Sonya pulls Zelda into a full hug. You saved your people. And you will save them again. A silence takes place over the two of them for a moment, before Sonia starts speaking again. Besides, that doesn't seem to be the only reason you want to return to your time. Zelda pulls away from Sonia and gives her a sad, tearful smile. I was going to propose to him. I made new armor for him and everything. And now, now I don't know if I'll even see him again. Tears begin falling freely from Zelda's eyes. Sonia simply holds her. Oh, my child. Then they sit in silence as Sonia allows Zelda to grieve before she finally speaks. Uh, do you know the legends of the chosen hero? Zelda nods her head. A hero wielding the sword of evil's bane will always arise to defeat evil. Sonia nods with her. But... Do you know why a hero will always arise? Zelda opens her mouth, then closes it. Then her eyebrows furrow before she finally admits. No. Sonya smiles and looks towards the heavens. Our goddess once loved a mortal. Despite her divinity, she became infatuated with a hero of men. This hero fought bravely to defend humans from the legions of monsters that threatened his people. As Sonya speaks, a shooting star streaks through the sky above them. The goddess descended from the heavens and fought alongside this hero. And together, they were able to fight against the demon king, who wished for the destruction of humanity. In the distance, the star fragment lands and creates a beacon of light. In a final confrontation, the goddess sealed away the Demon King. During this final battle, the hero was wounded badly. By the time the goddess got to him, it was too late and the hero died. The beacon of light fades and the night falls back into darkness. She screamed into the night and the earth trembled. She peered into the realm of spirits and found the soul of the hero. She tried to pull him back, but there was nothing to be done. Sonia pauses and reaches for a patch of flowers beside her. She pulls out a single sundelion from the patch. Despite her great power, Hylia could not command the souls of men. There was only one power in the world that could. Sonia casts Rewind on the sundelion and light pours from it. Hylia called upon the power of the golden goddesses, but as a god, she could not use it. So she shed her divinity and became a mortal. The glowing light around the Sundelion dissipates, revealing a silent princess. Sonia throws the silent princess into the wind. In this state, she called upon the power of the gods and reached back into the lands of spirits. She found the soul of the hero, and in an almighty effort, she bound her soul to his. Then exhausted, she collapsed and died. But then, she was born again. Pollen from the Silent Princess cascades down into the grass below. And so was a hero. Zelda looks on in wonder at the Silent Princess carried in the wind. We share the blood of the goddess. You are bound to Link, just as Hylia was bound to that hero. Zelda smiles gently. Then, 
a dark expression crosses her face. The Demon King was successful again. Ganon separated me and Link. Sonya looks disturbed. I've... I've been meaning to talk to you about that. She looks seriously at Zelda. If Ganon is a threat to your people even after thousands of years, then he's still a threat today. Zelda looks startled. The war is over. Ganondorf surrendered. Sonya shakes her head. I do not trust him. The moment he sees an opportunity, he will attack. We need to be ready when he does. Zelda nods her head. Then, Sonya continues. I have a task for you. There are other races of people scattered throughout this land. According to the ancient legends, the old king of evil Ganondorf was stopped by a hero wielding the sword that seals the darkness and seven sages. Sonya turns her whole body to face Zelda. We need to find sages who can fight back against Ganondorf. Zelda objects. Rauru seems to be confident that Ganondorf will not be a problem. Sonya grimaces. Rauru is very powerful and courageous, and although I love him dearly, I understand that he can be brash. The power he has displayed using the stone is barely the beginning. He feels that if Ganondorf becomes too powerful, he can still stop him. Sonya lets out a sigh. By consuming the stone, he will become an immortal dragon capable of destroying Ganondorf where he stands. But he will lose his mind in the process. Zelda seems shocked. An immortal dragon? She pauses and brings her hand to her mouth. That could get me back to my time. I can consume my stone, live forever, and then turn back when I reach my time. Sonya shakes her head. It's not that simple. You wouldn't be able to simply turn back into a human. The transformation is permanent. Frustrated, Zelda interjects. How can you be so sure? Sonya responds. There are only three people who have ever consumed one of these stones. Farouche, Dinral, and Nydra. Three ancient Sonite elders named after the goddess that created this world. Each became a dragon to watch over their sacred flames eternally, and none have regained their minds. Zelda deflates and looks over the expanse of Hyrule Field from her vantage atop the Great Plateau. Sonya puts her arm back around her. Don't worry, we'll get you home. After all, you have a wedding to plan. End memory three. I had a lot of fun writing this memory. I think it's very important to establish a strong bond between Sonya and Zelda. Zelda lost her mother when she was very young, and Sonya fills that role for her. I think the original story tried to do this, but they failed to make me care even a little bit about Sonya. Also, I got to throw in some chic quotes, which is always a blast. Now, moving on. Memory four. This memory will start in Hyrule Field, where Hyrule Castle would be in the present day. For now, it's simply an island. It's nighttime and raining slightly, and it seems like everyone has set up camp. The memory opens up for Zelda to explore the camp and talk to everyone. You can talk to the sages that Zelda has recruited. As always, there will be a few NPCs that you can help out with random tasks. Some of the NPCs have strange dialogue. Some even bring up what seems to be an unhealthy obsession with bananas. All the sages are in the camp, and if you talk to them, they will tell you about their people and how the war affected them. They will also tell you how much of an honor it is that you chose them to be a sage. Sonya and Raru are both at the camp, and if you talk to them, they will tell you that they are looking forward to the ceremony to initiate the sages at the sealed temple. While you work around the camp, you will slowly begin to hear some ominous music. Deep crimson smoke begins to rise from the ground, and the moon fades into a deep blood red. Then we move into a cutscene. As the blood moon rises once again, you can hear rhythmic chanting, and in the distance, you can see the silhouettes of three people standing against the blood moon. Two are beating on what appear to be drums, while the one in the middle simply stands tall. Then, with a burst of deep crimson light, the largest figure leaps across the river separating you. Then, Ganondorf lands hard in front of the camp, an ominous red smoke rising from his skin. Raru runs forward. What are you doing, Ganondorf? Ganondorf walks forward slowly. Taking what is rightfully mine. As he says this, smoke and paper bursts out from around several people in the camp, revealing Yiga outfits. Rage flashes across Raru's face. How dare you bastardize the symbol of the Sheikah? 
The sages all run to Raru and form a protective circle around him, facing off against the Yiga. Raru holds out his hand and the stone on it begins to glow. Stand down, Ganondorf, or I will kill you where you stand. Ganondorf laughs loudly, then runs directly at Raru. In a magnificent flash of light, Raru lets out a beam of energy. For a moment, the night is dispelled completely as the beam of energy engulfs Ganondorf, and then it continues far past him. We can see it traveling the length of Hyrule before it collides with Hebra Peak in the distance. The ground rumbles and boulders fly out at the collision site. Everyone goes quiet as the light dissipates. There is no sign of Ganondorf. The Goron Sage raises his boulder breaker over his head. If any of you thugs try anything, You'll be destroyed, just like your king. And who says I've been destroyed? Everyone wheels around to see where the voice was coming from, and to their horror, they see Ganondorf holding Sonya. Terror has taken its grip on Sonya. Let, Let her, her go! go! Zelda and Raru shout in unison. Oh, I will. It's not her life I'm after. Ganondorf grabs the stone on her necklace and pulls it off, breaking the necklace in the process. He then throws Sonya to the side. As soon as Sonya is out of the way, Raru leaps into action and runs at Ganondorf. The stone on his hand begins to glow and golden light begins to shoot out of it, but as he raises his arm, Ganondorf catches it. He raises both of their hands into the air and a beam of energy explodes from Raru's hand, shooting into the sky. Raru looks at Ganondorf in disbelief. Red light pours from Ganondorf's face, revealing the stone lodged into the ornamental dressing. Quickly, Raru brings his other hand around for a second attack, but Ganondorf catches it again. As the two struggle, the Yiga attack the other sages. Raru fights desperately against Ganon's grip and manages to break free. Sonya begins to run toward the two in a foolish errand to save her husband. Sonya, no! Raru screams. In a moment of desperation, Raru pulls his hand free and rips the stone from his gauntlet. He raises it to his mouth, but Ganondorf kicks Raru hard in the stomach sending him careening backward as the stone flies from his hand. Sonya continues to rush forward. Ganondorf glances in her direction. Then, a flash of steel. Sonya falls to the ground, and Ganondorf holds a bloody sword. All the sages run at Ganondorf, but before they can reach him, he slams his fist into the ground. A wave of energy throws everyone back, and a chasm forms below the group. The entire camp falls into the chasm. The camera fades to black. End memory four. This memory takes place of the whole disguised Ganondorf with the troll face laughing. I had a couple of gripes with this memory. For starters, I didn't like that there's this entire side plot with Ganondorf disguising himself as Zelda. Then we find out the Sonya and Zelda knew, so like, what was the point? It just seemed convoluted for no reason. So instead, I decided that Ganondorf could wait until a blood moon for his power to grow and then do a full frontal assault. I think this matches his character a little more and still accomplishes about the same thing. This takes care of the first four memories that Link can collect from the Pura Pad. Now we have a solid amount of information about what happened to Zelda, but there still seems to be one more memory locked in the Pura Pad. When you show it to Pura, she says that the file isn't corrupted but it's protected by some sort of firewall. All the information about it is written in ancient Zonai text. If you show it to Raru, he can translate the text and he discovers that it was his sister Minoru who created the firewall. In the text, it explains that the key to finding her is hidden in the Zonai ruins of the Farren region. Now you can do the entire quest that is in the base game of finding the spirit temple. Once you are there and complete the whole section, Minoru can help recover the final memory on the Pura Pad. Memory number five. The memory opens with a panning shot of the wreckage caused by Ganondorf's assault. The sages, including Raru, are all motionless on the ground. Raru's stone has fallen completely off his hand and is on the floor in front of him. Zelda is the only one stirring. She manages to get to her feet. In front of her stands Ganondorf, but his appearance has changed greatly. He bears a closer resemblance to the ancient demon king Demise than he does to his regular Gerudo form. Look how easily your kingdom crumbles before me. I should not have expected anything more from the people who serve such a weak goddess. Zelda faces down Ganondorf and pulls out the Master Sword. If you had any sense of preservation, you would already be running. Go, little girl. I'll even give you a head start. Zelda holds the Master Sword high in front of her like a talisman. You will find my courage harder to break than that, Ganon. I have defeated you once before, and I will do it again. 
Now, the cutscene changes into a fight. It is now your job to prevent Ganondorf from claiming another one of Raru's stones. Scattered around the room will be debris and other objects that you can use recall on to help you with the fight. Zelda is a lot slower and clumsier with the sword than Link is, but she is able to use recall on multiple items at the same time, and they can move a lot faster. After you fight back Ganon for some time, Raru will begin to stir, and the memory will transition back into a cutscene. Raru jumps forward to attack Ganondorf, drawing his attention. Seeing the opportunity to attack, Zelda runs forward at Ganondorf. Unconcerned, Ganondorf kicks Raru to the ground, and as Zelda swings to attack Ganondorf, he catches the Master Sword by the blade. He pulls the sword out of Zelda's hand. You thought to defeat me with this? Go and tell the pathetic fools who made this blade. Its power is gone, and its edges are dull. He then throws the sword behind him and advances menacingly. Zelda begins to back up. She can see Raru standing, and then he looks at her feet. Just behind her lays his stone. Zelda glances in his direction and nods. Then she springs into action. Zelda summons the Master Sword back using her recall, and simultaneously picks up the stone and throws it to Raru. As the sword speeds towards her, it slams into the back of Ganondorf's head. Raru catches the stone, rams it back into place on his gauntlet, and just as Ganondorf looks back up in rage, Raru slams his hand into Ganondorf's chest. The light spews from the point of contact, and both of the kings lurch to a crawl. Disbelief is etched across the Demon King's face. Then, he laughs maniacally. <laughs> You've only delayed the inevitable! The brilliant light reflects in Raru's eyes, and he defiantly raises his voice over Ganon's cruel laughter. You are wrong! A ribbon of green light begins to spiral around the two. Years from now, the hero of legend will appear with the sword glittering with light that seals the darkness. He will see to your destruction. Raru closes his eyes, resigned to his fate. Then he opens them and smiles. Remember this name. Link! The green light turns into ancient Zonai runes. Then all movement stops. End memory 5. Once you finish viewing this memory, Raru will speak to you and tell you about the battle against Ganondorf. He tells Link that the only way to defeat the Demon King is with the fully realized Master Sword. At this point in Link's story, it is up to him to figure out what happened to the Master Sword. The main problem being that Zelda took it with her to the past. If you speak to Raru, he suggests that you look for more information in the Temple of the Goddess, since this was the first resting place of the Master Sword. If you go there, you will trigger an encounter with Ganondorf. It will be similar to the one at Hyrule Castle in the base game. Once you finish the fight and Phantom Ganon runs away like the coward he is, you can proceed into the temple where the goddess statue is. If you go behind the statue, you will find that there is a door that glows green when you approach it. If you use Raru's hand, you can open the door and proceed. In here, you will find a map of Hyrule, just like in the base game. But this time, marked on the map are three torches. Each flame is a different color. In front of the map is a chest. If you go and open the chest, you will find a drive with another message from Zelda in it. The final memory. This memory opens on a visibly aged Zelda. You get to take control of Zelda at the sealed temple. She is being followed by two Sheikah. If you talk to NPCs around the temple, you will make some discoveries. Firstly, everyone refers to Zelda as Queen. You can also find people working on strange bits of mechanics. One person has created a cannon that can fire a laser, while others are working on what look like robot snakes that have claws at the end of them. If you delve deeper into the temple, you will find people putting these parts together. And at the very end of the hall, you will find a complete and fully operational Guardian. If you talk to the Sheikah who is operating the Guardian, they will praise Zelda for her ingenious designs. If you continue even further, you will reach the door that Link just went through. Once you get there, it will change into a cutscene. Zelda looks back at the two Sheikah who are following her. I must continue alone. The two guards nod to her and then leave. Zelda enters the room, and the heavy door shuts behind her. Then she continues to the map on the floor, and looks over the flames that burn there. Their multicolored lights reflect off the walls and cast Zelda in a harsh shadow. Then she looks directly into the camera. Link, I pray to Hylia that this message finds you. As she peers into the camera, you can see the age lines on her face, and the gray starting to form at her roots. You must have seen the Guardians and think me insane to have created them. 
I know they will someday cause the destruction of my kingdom. She lets out a sigh, then sits on the ground. Forgive me, Link. I have been trapped in this era. Sonya was the only one who could have helped me figure out this power, and she now lies in a grave outside this room. I had to help the people of this era. I created technology to protect them. I rebuilt the kingdom just like you and I were trying to do. She looked back up at the camera. They had a daughter, you know. Rauru and Sonya, I mean. They named her Zelda before I even met them. I raised her and taught her the best I knew how. She will be the queen soon. Link, I can sense the first calamity is drawing near. Their daughter is the princess that stops it, I'm sure of it. I know the history of my people, and I know they will overcome this attack by Ganon. They will use the technology that I have created to stop Ganon. And then, in 10,000 years, it will destroy everything I once loved. I still don't know if I made the right choice, trading the generation that I was born in for countless generations that I will never see. She shakes her head softly. But it is not only this era that I plan to save. Zelda stands and looks into the camera again. The Master Sword is the only thing we know of that can kill Ganondorf. I have made preparations to ensure that you can do so. The magic that once coursed through the blade has waned over the years, rendering it barely stronger than any other sword. I have delved deep into the history of this blade and come up with a solution. We must bathe the blade in sacred flames, just as was done when it was first forged. In the labyrinths of the Zonai, there rest such flames. They perpetuate from the magic of the immortal dragons. Dinral for power, Nadra for wisdom, Farash for courage. I cannot forge the blade because it never chose me. Link, you must forge the blade of Evil's Bane once more. Only then can this conflict end once and for all. Zelda walks to the end of the room and puts her hand against the wall at the far end. Green light flashes in a square before the wall opens to reveal a pedestal with the Master Sword thrust into it. Here lies the Master Sword, and here it will lie in 10,000 years when you see this recording. They say there is a voice that lives inside this sword. It is true, I spoke with her, which is why I know there is one thing left to do. Attributes of power, wisdom, and courage are imprinted upon the sword when it is bathed in the sacred flames. However, there is another attribute that is necessary, the power of time and light, the very essence of the goddess Hylia that forged the goddess's sword in the first place. There is only one person that I know of that can imprint those attributes onto the sword and they must make the sacrifice of draconification to create the fourth sacred flame. Zelda turns around and looks into the camera one last time and raises her stone. Tomorrow I will consume this stone and create the sacred flame of light. Link, you must draw the sword and kill Ganondorf once and for all. Then the little flying camera soars back into the pura pad. Zelda motions to end the recording, but pauses. I love you, Link. Goodbye. And the final memory. A powerful roar echoes far above in the heavens. Zelda. Now the player can go to the hidden room in the temple and open it using Raru's hand. The door grinds open, revealing inside the Master Sword. Behind the sword glows a powerful golden flame. You can now draw the Master Sword. No fanfare and no hearts or stamina upgrades needed. However, when you approach the flame, Raru will stop you and inform you that getting nearer could be dangerous and you should only do so if you have enough power. He advises you to seek out the other flames first to strengthen the sword. The Master Sword will then function exactly as it did in Breath of the Wild. It will run out of energy and only deal extra damage against specific enemies. As you go to the other flames which are hidden in the depths under the Zonai Labyrinths, you will have to fight a Phantom Ganon at each one. Each of these Phantom Ganon fights will be a reference to one of the Ganondorf fights from the other Zelda games. One will be him flying and doing a Deadman's Volley 
volley with you. Another will be him dual wielding two swords and you need the sages to help you attack him. And one will be him on horseback with a fake double appearing from different directions. When you defeat each Phantom Ganon, you will get access to the Sacred Flames. Each time you collect one of these flames, the Master Sword will deal an extra 10 points of damage until reaching a max of 60, just like after the Trial of the Sword in Breath of the Wild. Finally, you can head back to the Forgotten Temple where the Golden Flame is and plunge the sword in. When you do, you will finally get the Master Sword and all the fanfare music that comes with it. Then, slowly, you transition into Fi's theme. Then a purple text box will appear with text that reads, Master, my calculations indicate that the Master Sword has been returned to 100% power. Now the Master Sword will not only deal 60 damage a swing, but it will never break. I think the way to balance this is by making it impossible to fuse items to it. This way, the sword can still be the legendary Master Sword, and probably the best weapon in the game. But you still have incentive to collect other weapons so you can create monstrosities that can deal 800 damage in one go. Finally, you now have the Master Sword, and the main story is over. The rest of the story will be the same as vanilla. You go and fight. Ganondorf. If you don't have the Master Sword, then you can still fight Ganondorf, but when you face off against the Demon Dragon, the Light Dragon will pull some magic and seal away the Demon Dragon in the Sacred Realm. If you have the Master Sword, but you haven't collected the Golden Flame, then Ganondorf will comment on the sword being weak and powerless, just like when Zelda fought him. However, if you have the fully upgraded Master Sword, then you have the ability to kill Ganondorf once and for all. This will trigger a flag in the game where now Ganondorf is defeated and NPCs will have unique dialogue confirming this. However, regardless of which ending you get, Zelda will remain as the Light Dragon. There is no magic that can undo such a powerful transformation. There was only one power in the world that could. Now Link has the opportunity to try and figure out more about the Golden Goddesses. If you go and talk to the Great Deku Tree, he will tell you about the creation of the world and about the goddesses and about the Triforce. This then kicks off the quest of the post game. It is now Link's objective to find the Triforce. You find hints about the location of the Triforce if you visit each of the goddesses' springs. The statues there will tell you that the only one that knows where the Triforce is hidden is their mother. They will offer to give you a password to tell their mother in exchange for a quest. Each quest will test your power, wisdom, and courage respectively. Once you complete all of these quests, you can go to the goddess statue in the Forgotten Temple. The mother of the goddess statues will open a passageway into a new dungeon hidden below the Forgotten Temple called Skykeep. Then Link can collect the Triforce from the gates to the sacred realm within the dungeon. Finally, he can use the Triforce to undo the magic that turned Zelda into a dragon. This way, Zelda can still make a huge sacrifice to ensure the survival of the kingdom. But because of Link's effort, he can undo the magic using the most powerful object in the entire universe. It also parallels the story of Hylia seeking out the Triforce to be with her chosen hero again. Now we have the full cutscene of Link and Zelda falling from the sky and Link catching her and then both landing in the water. Then we can see Zelda return to her youthful state as if she never left Link's side in the first place. And finally, for the love of all that is good in this world, just let the two kiss. The fans of the Zelda series have been asking for this for the past 35 years. Just let it happen. Now, to complete the entire game, there is one more cutscene. Link and Zelda enter the Forgotten Temple hand in hand. They make their way to the hidden room in the back. Zelda leans over to Link. After thousands of years of war, I think it's finally time for her to rest. They open the chamber where the pedestal lays. The golden flame still burns bright in the chamber, perpetuated by the Triforce itself. Link pulls out the Master Sword, and both he and Zelda grab hold before thrusting it into the pedestal. They begin to walk away, but as they do so, they hear the sword pulse. They both turn around to see light pouring from the sword before a figure bursts from it. Phi stands before them in all her glory. Link gasps then walks forward slightly and reaches out his hand. Fia glides gently forward and bows before him. Then she begins to speak. Master, the batteries in your Wii remote are nearly depleted. Hey, um, thanks for watching the video. Uh, this has been a crazy process. Uh, if you're gonna subscribe to anyone, 
uh, from this video, don't subscribe to me. Subscribe to the fantastic channels that helped me make this video. Uh, we have voice actors, we had uh, thumbnail artists. It's been amazing. Uh, thank you to uh, the Geek Apprentice for playing Zelda. She did a fantastic job. She does uh, really fun live streams. Uh, she covers uh, Zelda content as well as uh, Hunger Game content. And another one that I don't remember right now. Uh, thank you to uh, Lily Hyrule. She did a really good job. She also does Zelda content. Her videos are fantastic. Uh, she played Sonya. Thank you to Wind Waker Unflooded, who played Ganondorf. Uh, he, he has a channel that does exactly what it sounds like, where he 3D models to show you uh, what Hyrule would look like in Wind Waker uh, if there wasn't an ocean on top of it. He also has a podcast, uh, and you should check it out, because it's fantastic. Thank you to my old roommate for playing Raru. He did a great job. Uh, thank you to uh, Gossip Geist, he made the thumbnail for this video. Uh, he also read through the script, gave me pointers. Thank you to Parker the Rat, who did the same thing, minus the thumbnail part. Thank you to my brothers, who read through the script and told me things that were really bad and told me to get rid of them or change them. Uh, the, this video took so much effort on so many people's parts, and it turned out amazing. I'm so grateful for it. Uh, if you want to see more videos like this, let me know in the comments. Uh, yeah, I think that's it. See ya.